Okay, it's uh, getting deep into fall at this point, and um, I want to get this thing in the water this year. So I, I got about four layers of varnish on the inside. Everything's varnished up pretty well, but as you can probably see through the camera, you know, I still got some lines. I still have some sanding to do. I still have some varnishing to do, uh, but I want to get it in the water for now. So I'll come back and finish that up a little bit later. Um, right now, I got to show you how, how to get these seats mounted. Um, we're going to put a spindle right in the middle. It's going to hold it down. I got another seat here. Now the spindle, you know, if you've got a lathe in your shop and you're, you're so inclined, go ahead, make your own. Uh, this costs less than $5 at one of the big box stores. And all it is is a, uh, a baluster going up stairs, right? So, you know, you kind of cut it to the length that you want to make it look good and mount it to the seat. And the way I mounted it to the seat was a pretty simple process. Uh, I've got it mounted under here and you find the center of the seat simply by measuring across on both sides and then finding the center coming down, finding the center there. Countersunk a screw. Um, found the center of that simply by doing an X across the square and screwed this in. And then I came back and I put a bung here, wooden plug, and sanded it off. So I you know, need to do three or four layers of varnish on top of that. And then uh, you're going to put a little bead of caulking right around here, and I'll show you that in a minute. Uh, and it'll hold it nice and tight for you. So the idea here is so that when the seat is in and you're sitting down, you want that to be exactly the right height, right? So that is a simple matter of starting by, you know, on this I cut off everything but about an inch and a half here. Uh, and then you just put it under the seat after you've done that you mark it and what I do is I cut it about an eighth of an inch longer than that because it's always easier to shave a little bit off than it is to add it on and remember once you've cut it the only way to change the height is to move your seat and you don't want to do that uh, the way I did the plans for these the seats are kind of balanced in the boat so be careful cutting these uh, and better you should spend an extra four or five dollars and get another one if you cut it wrong okay so that's how you put the spindles on underneath. Re really, really simple process. So now we got to get the seat mounted, right? And this seat is, uh, this is the main rowing seat here. And it's uh, set up the same way that one is with the spindle underneath. And you can see down there that I marked it with tape uh, where the spindle's gonna hit. And what that does is it allows me to put some clear adhesive sealant down there and I'm going to put the adhesive sealant underneath here on the risers on both of them and at that spot right there where it connects because we don't like water getting in places it shouldn't be and we sure don't like water staying in places that it shouldn't be so we're going to go ahead and use some clear sealant clock in there so once the seats are where the plans tell you to put them I just take some blue tape mark both sides mark around the spindle underneath and then I'm pretty much ready to uh, start scribing where I want to put screws. Now, I cannot stress enough at this point to be careful with your screws, right? Remember, you've only got a quarter inch hull here and you've got the seat riser to deal with. So what I do is I take my compass and I set the compass so that as I am looking straight down on the top of it, the pencil is going to ride on the seat right above the very, very edge of the seat riser here. All right, so that as I scribe that all the way along, that tells me if I go straight down, I'm gonna hit the very edge, all right? So I don't wanna hit the very edge, so what I'm going to do is, when I go ahead and do my screw holes, I'm gonna come in about a quarter of an inch from that and screw straight on down, all right? so. The lines in my guide, kind of my red flag saying, absolutely don't go up to this point because if you do, you're going to miss your seat riser and you're going to have a screw sticking out beneath. So let's talk a little bit about screw length. I got a three quarter inch seat here and I need to go down through that and into the seat riser. Now the caulking adhesive is going to do just a ton to hold that seat in place for you. Right? And you never lift a boat up by the seat, so the only pressure you're worried about is 
see it's going down. So I'm not overly worried about, you know, cranking in a two inch screw into this thing um, because all I really need to do is hold the seats in place. Um, make sure that they don't wiggle around on me. So I'm going to come down with an a inch and a half screw. And because remember, I got one inch on this. I got three quarters of here, that's inch and three quarters. I'm gonna recess it just a little bit and that should bring me just about to the right place. If that concerns you a little bit, uh, you can always go with an inch and a quarter. Right? And an inch and a quarter will be good and safe, right? I typically use deck screws in these and I'll tell you why. You can use brass screws, but if you're gonna use brass screws, drill them out use the deck screws first, get everything settled and dried in place, then back the deck screws out and go ahead and put your brass screws in. Brass screws are notorious for breaking off on you. You can use silica bronze, uh, a little bit more expensive and a little bit more difficult to find. You're certainly not gonna find them uh, in your local hardware store, likely, so you're gonna have to special order those. Uh, they're stronger and they do give you that look of brass, um, but for me, you know, I'm, I'm kind of old school paranoid. I know with all the new tools, especially the tools we have here with the oscillating tools and all, that if anything ever happened, I could get this boat apart. No doubt in my mind. But, you know, it's the old school in me that says, you know, you want to make sure that whatever you put together, you can tear apart in case you have to repair something. So for me, what I do is I put the screws in. You can see I have them in that forward seat there. I sink them about a sixteenth of an inch or so. And then when I'm done, I'm going to put a little bit of varnish basically covering that up uh, and that'll seal those off. So, you know, you got deck screws which have a ceramic coating on it, you put some varnish over it and they're, they're gonna be good to go for a long time. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and finish putting my lines on this and then we're gonna countersink and drill down in it so that we can get ready to put our screws in the boat. All right, so for me, for deciding where these screws are gonna go, it's a pretty easy process. I got eight inches here for my seat so I'm going to come in uh, two, and then we go four, and then six will be the next one. So I got basically a four inch interval between the screws and two inches on either side. And then I'm going to do the same thing over here the other side. I'll give it a nice even look. Two, four, and six. All right. Now it's just a matter of uh, drilling down and countersinking these, and I'll take care of that. Uh, and then we're going to be ready to start doing some caulking. So again, this is uh, crystal clear, uh, exterior grade sealant and adhesive. And it works really well and it just disappears when you're done. So I'm going to put enough right here in the crevice. Make sure that I got a good seal. When I drop that seat on there, I should be able to go in there and uh, wipe a bead right across and then wipe a bead up the edges there. And then I'll go ahead and put one up on top. Alright, so I need to get some stuff on the other end, but I might as well do this while I'm here. Okay, now the only trick to this is uh, coming straight down because you want that spindle in the middle to hit exactly where it's supposed to hit. Make sure that it oozes out all the way around and it does. Beautiful. Make sure your seat is centered where you want it to be. Checking on both sides. If you got a little gap, make sure you have the same size gap on both sides of the boat. Really good. Got a little bit oozing out underneath. Perfect. All right, let's take some screws and set that seat down in. All right. Screws are set. Feel a little bit of a ooze underneath there. I got it coming out the sides. That's a good thing. So we are all looking right here. All right, go ahead and pull that tape up. Now as always, we're gonna go back and we're gonna clean up. So we're gonna gently pull up this tape here. 
You can probably see that ooze, which is perfect. It's exactly what we wanted to happen. We wanted to ooze right around that spindle. Give it a little bit of flexibility and keep water out from underneath there. And it kind of goes without saying, I'm hoping that uh, before I put that on there, everything was varnished. And in fact, the end of the spindles were just drinking up the varnish. So I put about four coats of varnish underneath there. So between that and cleaning this up, and having a nice bead going around it, it'll be in good shape. I'm just gonna, all right, so the last thing to do here is to make sure that we got a decent seal around it. So that again, we don't get water where we don't want water. And for sure we don't get water staying where we don't want it. And I'm just gonna run my finger around it, push it down in there. Get a nice tight seal. Give it a little scrape with my putty knife. Nice clean edge. And there you go. So now I just need to do that to the other side. I got varnish up where my peg holes are here. Probably put another coat of varnish on the spindles. And these seats are going to be good to go. While I'm varnishing these up, I'm going to take a little bit of varnish and drip it in there. And again, these are deck screws, good and strong. Uh, I think they look fine. You know? And again, you can put in the brass or the bronze. Um, because they do look a little bit prettier, but I'm kind of a utilitarian guy. And I figure after they're in there, I'm never going to look at them again. So um, that's it. That's how you put a seat in. So same thing for the rest of these. Obviously, there's no spindle in the front seat, uh, but it goes in the same way, exactly the same way with the scribing and the screws. And then the back seat uh, in, the, in the, the stern of the boat, uh, you need to find exactly where your mounts are mark underneath with a pencil, drill up through so that it pokes through, and then go ahead and uh, countersink from the top. That way there you know you're in the right spot and you won't miss it. Uh, so I am going to move along and finish up these seats, but I think before I do, you've probably noticed that we've got oil locks in the boat. I'm going to go over there and grab a set of uh, uh, receivers there so that you can take a look and and see how we did that. Okay, so you can see that uh, I got my oil lock sockets on here already. And it's a pretty basic process. You know, I'm one of those guys who has never really been happy with what's available on the market, but you know, short of actually coming up with a casting of my own, which I just don't have time for these days, I'm gonna figure out a way to make this stuff work. Now, it's not that I have a problem with the quality um, or how they work. Problem is, is they all seem to be made for metal boats or, you know, metal gunnels and, and nothing's really made for wooden boats. And the people who have made them for wooden boats, they seem so dainty and delicate that uh, probably wouldn't work on a boat like this. So the only issue, these are the ones that we've settled on. We've used a bunch of different ones. So these are the ones that we stock here and selling our kits to customers and such. And the only downside to these is you can see that, you know, this is only down about you know, maybe just under a half an inch down, and this is about just under a half an inch in. So that doesn't give you, when you consider the thickness of the metal here on the end, it doesn't give you a whole lot to work with, right? And also, this hole is not directly beneath the top hole, but it's just barely offset, and it's offset basically enough by, you know, to squeeze your screw through there. Now you can bolt these straight through if that's what you want to do and use nylon uh, uh, lock nuts. But I prefer just to put a screw in them because I know it's going to work just fine. All right, so here's, here's the thing. When you put them on there, you want to make sure that this screw on the top does not angle in at all or else it'll get in the way of this screw that's going to be coming in from the side. So you want to make sure you go straight down, canter maybe just a little bit out away from the center of the socket. And then on the sides here, when you go in, you want to canter 
down just a little bit because you know you're only right at the top here and with the, the quarter inch gunnel cap that we have here our screw is just barely below that quarter inch gunnel cap now you know this thing is epoxied all the way up so i'm not worried about it you know splitting or cracking or coming out because if it does then that means you know there was something wrong with the glue job to begin with now you want to start when you put these on assuming that you use you know these this type you want to start by putting the top down first all right pre-drill everything because this would be a horrible time to have things crack so don't be lazy pre-drill everything for the screws um, put the tops in first and that'll hold your gunnel cap down to your gunnels and then go ahead and put the side ones in and you should be fine and, and that's really all there is to it so let's talk a little bit now if you get something obviously other than this then you're gonna have to go by the directions or try to figure it out you know just make sure that you're doing smart things I'm using number 10 screws in here because I really want them to grab because I know the kind of rowing I do I, I pull and I pull pretty hard okay so let's talk about where we put them now um, you can see the the type of wall locks that I use are the kind that you uh, Kyle L you're, you're gripping the actual ore itself um, maybe not as elegant as a horn uh, but for me it's more comfortable and I'm not popping out or anything like that so that's what I use doesn't really matter what you use as long as you're comfortable with it what does matter is where the ores are going to go so in the plans I'm obviously going to make a suggestion to you as to where this goes in respect to the seat but as a general rule think about it before you do it all right because a lot of it's going to depend on your arm span um, what kind of strokes you like to take whether they're long and powerful or short and easy as a general rule I like it so that when I am sitting in the boat and I've got the oars at rest on my legs which would be right about here it's going to be just barely forward of center right which means it's aiming towards the back so that means if I'm sitting straight up and I'm pulling on that oar once I get right about here sitting straight up at rest position the oar is right here which means as I lean back I'll pull forward as I lean forward I'll pull back so this is kind of the stroke that you're looking to do right here okay so think about it before you put yours in take a look at you know the suggestion that we made you know sit down in a seat kind of work your arms think about it because if you've got really long arms then you know you may want to put this just a couple inches forward if you got really short arms you may want to put it a couple inches back you know once you're in the center of the boat then it's just a matter of moving these and adjusting them to where you're happy one of the great things about building your own boat is you can make it so that it works for you right and that's a beautiful thing okay so again I like it right about there is where I'm gonna be at rest it's a little bit forward um, I probably should have put it back another inch or so but I like it I'm gonna put it in the water see how it is worst case scenario is I need to take these and move them back which gives me a couple of holes that I need to deal with and if you made it this far dealing with those holes isn't really going to be that big an issue for you worst case scenario is you got a couple of plugs to put in not a big deal okay well that's about what I can tell you you know again you know normally I'd have more sanding and more varnish done on this thing but falls here I want to get this thing in the water so I'm going to do a hustle up here get her finished off so that the next few days we can get it launched and I'm really looking forward to taking a couple of rows. There you go.